Steve Adubato here in the Tish WNET studio here in the heart of Lincoln Center. Uh, not too far away from Fordham, the uh, campus here in Manhattan. Why do I mention Fordham? Because this guy is probably the most famous alum from Fordham. Michael Kay, host of the Michael Kay Show on ESPN Radio, um, the star of Center Stage, also the voice of the New York Yankees on the Yes Network. It is an honor to have you here. Oh, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. I think Alan Ald is probably a bigger alum than me. But, hey, hey, wait a minute. We just had Alan Alda's wife, uh, Arlene Alda, who wrote the book about Great the lady. park. And by the way, you were in that book. Yeah. And by the way, hold on. You have a name. The, the street is named after you in the Bronx. Yeah, well, they have a they have a <laughs> Hall of Fame walk uh, on the Grand Concourse, so one of the one of the blocks has my my sign there. But I think it's been stolen twice. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be saying that. It it's has been. True, yeah, right? it has been stolen twice. What did the Bronx mean to you? I think it meant everything. I mean, I think it's still in me. Uh, I grew up very diverse neighborhood, and I was able to get along with different people. And uh, you know, I we 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 were poor, not not even middle class. We were poor, mm. and I just think it makes me appreciate the things that I have. So, I uh, grew up in the South Bronx for the first twelve years, and moved to Throgs Neck when mm. I was twelve years old. And uh, I am the Bronx. I still have the Bronx in me. Loved the Yankees as a kid. When I was nine years old, I, I, I sat in a class and I told my parents I want to be the Yankee announcer. I mean, I, I would watch every Yankee game or listen to every Yankee game. And I, I wanted to be the Yankee announcer because by nine, I knew I couldn't play. I was afraid of getting hit by a pitch. So in order to be involved with the Yankees, I have to be their announcer. So Who were their guys at the time in the booth? Uh, it was Rizzuto, White, and Messer. And I always said there were four male voices heard in my house, my dad and those three men. Wow. Yeah, I'm really lucky. And the Fordham connection. What did that mean to you? Because you talk about Fordham a lot, and I know they're real proud of you. Well, you know what? They have such a great communication program, and they have such a great radio station, WFUV, and the people that have come out of FUV, starting with Vince Scully, mm. and it just blows you away, and Mike Breen, uh, who's the Nick announcer Nick, and right? the, the NBA guy. We were best friends in school. I mean, we grew up together, and uh, you know, we'd sit in the campus center, and he'd say, I want to be the Nick announcer. I'd say, I want to be the Yankee announcer. And Wow. So a little pixie dust in the air. Talk a little bit about the uh, radio show you do every day with uh, LaGreca. Yeah, Don LaGreca. How much fun you have doing? Let everybody know the hours and the whole We're bit. on from 3 to 7. Uh, and we're also simulcast on Yes, so that's all around the country. It gives it more of a national flavor. And uh, I love the show. I mean, we try to have fun. It's like two buddies talking about sports and involving other people. And we've added a third person this year, Peter Rosenberg, who's more of a hip-hop guy. Uh, he used to do, he does morning shows on uh, Hot 97. So he adds uh, a younger vibe because Don and I are getting a little long in the tooth. And we have a good time. We joke around about things. And the best way I could put it, what we try to achieve is kind of a Howard Stern sports show. But it is Disney-owned, so it can't be that much exactly. of a Howard Stern show. Exactly. But, but you know what? Michael, you, one of the things about you, and also Center Stage, one of my favorite yes Thank shows. You. And I can, I'll watch, I watched the Tyson interview from Center Stage for the sixth time the other day. Wow. And I'm not even joking, because you see different pieces of it. And I just, I was watching a part of, him talking, I don't want to get too into it, and I thought he was so powerful and emotional and what you got out of him was so incredible. And I often think to myself, because I do what I do here, and I ex absolutely love what I do here, and I think to myself, does Michael pinch himself and say, I love what I do when I can't believe they pay me? I, I know it sounds ridiculous. No, but I do. Uh, I, I'm, I'm glad that you brought that up because I tell friends that I grew up with, if I ever complain about anything, just slap me in the head. I mean. You know, yeah, so, so travel's not great when you're away from your family, but it's a small price to pay for the job you have. And sometimes, you know, we've had the biggest guests on Center State. They do a great job getting guests. And uh, one time I was sitting across from Paul Simon, even closer than the two of us are, and he's strumming his guitar, singing the songs. And I'm thinking, I'm, I'm sitting here with Paul Simon. I mean, how lucky am I? I mean, the, the, the amount of guests that we've had and guys that you look up to and and I think that they like doing a show like that because it's an hour. It's not snippets of what they say. They get a chance to tell their story. So uh, it's one of my favorite things that I do. I really enjoy that show. It's powerful. And, and that's why I like it. When I see the year that it was, I say, it doesn't matter to me. It's timeless. It's evergreen. You know what's great, though, Steve, is you watch, uh, we've been on 14 years now. Yeah. And you could just see weight loss, weight gain on me, <laughs> weight loss, weight gain on me, weight loss, gray hair. <laughs> Pretty you amazing. haven't struggled with that, have you? Oh, my goodness. Get yeah. out of here. Oh, God. I, I'll lose 50 pounds every two months and then put it back, and, you know, it's terrible. But i got to ask you something about that. When you're in the booth, yeah. and you say you struggle with that, and Paul O'Neill comes in there, and he's got the ice cream, and he's got the cookies, and he's got the cake, and he's shredded still. He's shredded. 
Does that bother you? Oh, it, it annoys me. And Isn't it wrong? It's wrong. Because, because <laughs> one thing, though, Steve, he works out like a maniac. So, like, he gets up in the morning, he'll put in a two, three-hour workout, like throwing up real iron. But he's got a 32-inch waist. He looks better than he did when he played, and he's over 50, but he eats everything. And if I ate like he ate, I mean, I'd be 400 pounds, so... Yeah, I If I wasn't that. on TV, I'd be fine. Yeah. I would be in 400 pounds. Yeah, vanity <laughs> does have its place. Yes. I just want to say that. Uh, speaking <laughs> of yes, okay, let's talk about being the voice of the Yankees. Describe that gig, because you, you do a, virtually, you don't do all the games, but you do a lot of the games. 125, yeah. that's the contract. Yeah. How do you work that out with the radio gig? Well, from April through September, it, it's a tough go for me. I mean, because you're doing the radio show, and boom, right after I'm off the radio show, I run up to the booth and I do the game. So it's like talking for eight hours straight. And you know, if you say just the wrong word on live TV, or your career's over. I mean, just even if it's interpreted the wrong way. So there's that pressure, but it's two things that I really love. But you know, usually toward the end of August mm. and the beginning of September, I'm fried. I mean, you know, my wife could see it, and uh, people that know me can see it. You just fried. Yeah, you talked about your wife, uh, uh, Jordy and I. Jordy Applegate, uh, Jordy Applegate, and I worked in it together, um, Fox Five. Mm -hmm. Talk about Jody and talk about how you met her, uh, because that's interesting. Well, I never wanted to be married. I enjoyed being a bachelor. And uh, then I was at the New York Emmy Awards, which is at the Marriott Marquis. I guess it was about 48 at that time. And uh, I saw this woman across the room in a, in a pink dress. And I asked somebody from Yes, I said, is that the girl from Fox 5? They go, yeah, wow, she's awesome. And he said, oh yeah, she's married and has three kids. Well, she wasn't married. She had been married previously and she never had kids. So the next day on my radio show, I started saying, I saw a woman yesterday that if I could design the perfect woman for me, at least looks wise, because I didn't talk to her. Did you say it was Jody? Yeah, it was, would be Jody Applegate. And she was working at News 12 in Long Island at the time, and somebody came into her office and said, you know, Michael Kay is talking about you on the radio. And her reply, which I, which I love, was, well, who's Michael Kay? Hold on, Jody Applegate says, I don't know Michael Kay? Did, not a big sports fan, she had no idea who I was. So then everybody at the News 12, like, kind of go to there and to call, well, call in. Call, you know, it's a sports talk show. So she called in, and she, she said she was Jody from Long Island, and I finally got who it was. And at that time, Michelle Beadle, who's on yeah. ESPN, was on our show. And she's going, ask her out, ask her out. Michelle's pretty wild. She's great. She's great. And I knew she wouldn't be on the show a long time because she's a shooting star. Yeah, and she, the, she pushes, too. Yeah, she's great. And I asked her out. I asked Jody out. And she said no. So I said, all right, thanks for the phone call. Boom, and I hung up. And two months later, I'm walking outside Madison Square Garden. A friend of Jody's walks up to me and says, you know, I'm a friend of Jody Applegate. And I had, like, put that in the back of my mind. I said, yeah. She goes, you know, she would go out with you now if you asked because she was going out with somebody. She felt awkward when you asked her on the air. I said, well, I have embarrassed myself in front of how many, hopefully a million people, but probably not that much. I said, she knows how to get in touch with me. And the next day, I got an email if that offer still stands. And I think we were married, like, a year later. That's awesome. And you have two young children. Two kids. Callie, who's uh, about three. And Charlie just turned one. So I'm 54. Do the math. It's not good. Uh, believe me, uh, being an older dad's a great thing, I know. And Jody Applegate's one of the great broadcasters in this market, and uh, you guys are a great combination. Thank you. Um, Yankees? Because I would be remiss. Uh, Neil Shapiro, our president on the back end of this show, uh, one of the great Yankee fans of all time. He's been to more games than I think he'll admit. Um, <clears throat> and we all, a lot of us around here, love the Yankees. i got to ask you. Will they in the immediate or in the next few years be the Yankees we want them to be, Michael? Well, I think that what they've, they've realized, and Hal Steinbrenner is really bright. I mean, the Yankees kind of lucked into the, the son of, of an iconic owner being a bright guy who really knows what he's doing. He realizes that every team in baseball has money now. There's so much money in the game with the baseball advanced media. Teams are, mm. are washing cash. So people don't really lose their players. So the way the Yankees used to do it, you know, going out and getting the big free agent, supplementing what they have, it's, it's hard to do now. So they want to build from within, and they want to get rid of some of their big salaries. I think they'll still make big splashes for guys that they want, but it'll be needle movers, guys that, you know, you don't get up from the TV when they come up. But right now the Yankees are concerned about keeping their young players like Luis Severino, Greg Bird, Aaron Judge, uh, Jorge Mateo. Those are the type of guys they mm. want to build around because what they like to create is another core four. Because this great run, although it was supplemented by – Free agents, it was always Jeter, Posada, Pettit, Rivera, and Bernie Williams was that fifth one. Will we ever have another core four, in I your opinion? I don't know if you can. I mean, we were so lucky to have that. I think that was a once-in-a-lifetime lightning strike. 
if they have it. I mean, they'd be blessed, but they had a 20-year run because of that. So I'm listening to you the last game of Jeter. Does it bring a smile to your face? Yes, amazing. Only Derek Jeter could do that. I mean, all the planets aligned. They had a lead. So if Robertson had closed the game, it would have been a nice ending, but nothing from Fernando. They lose the lead. Right. He blows the lead, and he had been perfect <laughs> all year. Blows the lead. I think he gave up two home runs. And then, of course, because the way Derek's life has been written, he gets a base hit to end it. I mean, what a perfect ending to his Yankee Stadium career. When he's walking down those steps, and Torrey is there, I, do you get emotional? I, I got emotional the previous year when, when Mo got emotional, when Mariano cried on the mound. Yeah. And we ended up winning an Emmy for that. It's funny, I won an Emmy for keeping my mouth shut for 20 minutes, so it tells you how good a broadcaster <laughs> I am. But the next year, when, when Derek, Derek doesn't get emotional, I kind of feed off emotion. Yeah. So I know that Derek is very <clears throat> stoic. I thought it was a, a phenomenally fantastic Yankee moment. I mean, because Joe Torrey's like his second dad. Yeah. And he's very close with his dad. Sure. But Joe Torrey is baseball dad. I thought that was beautiful. And I thought it, it really meant something to Yankee fans. I think my line was, you know, so long, Derek. That's what you said. Yeah, it was exactly just, what you yeah, said. Yeah, it was just an amazing. I mean, the Yankees kind of like set the, the palette up for you and the, and the paint. Yeah. It's really easy to paint the picture. <clears throat> so, um, see ya. Yankee hits a home run. Where does it come from? It comes from an ex-girlfriend. I got the Yankee. Um, I got the Yankee radio gig with John Sterling. I, the first year was '92, and I found out I got the job at the beginning of '92. And I was going out with this young lady who lived in Suffern. By the way, uh, Michael uh, wrote for the Post and, and the Daily the news. news. Yeah. Okay. Good. I'm sorry. And then whenever she would get out of the car at the end of a date, she'd go, "See, I wouldn't want to be you." <laughs> so everybody, when you were when you were an announcer, you're like, well, I have to have some kind of signature home run call. Maybe you don't have to, but you think you do. And I said. Maybe see you. But I left out, wouldn't want to be you. So this young lady every now and then through people, I haven't had contact with her in 20 years, says, don't, don't, should I get money for that? I said, well, I don't really make money off see ya. I don't sell t-shirts <laughs> with see ya. It's just what I say, but that's how it came about. See ya. See ya. Wow. Yeah. It wouldn't be a Yankee home run without it. <laughs> yeah, it's been, a, it's been a fun call. And when, when you walk up and like, you know, parents bring their like eight-year-old kids and they scream see ya, it's, it's really, yeah. it's kind of a great thing. Um, in a couple of minutes we have left. You do the sports, we do the Yankees. Um, when you're broadcasting the Yankees, you uh, do your radio show every day, you got center stage. Do you get tired of speaking, talking about baseball and sports? Sometimes sports disappoints me in that, you know, some of the things that happen, the Greg Hardys of the world, and, and people get so so locked into sports that it almost becomes an obsession. And sometimes I, I'll, I'll talk to Jody, I said, I don't know, does this make a difference in the world? Maybe I should be doing something else. Should I do politics? And, and she goes, no, because it does make a difference. It makes people happy. It gets people away from all the politics and the stuff that annoy people in life. She said, so, you know, you shouldn't think of it like, what am I really doing? Because I love doing it. I mean, if I wasn't announcing, I'd be a fan. So I get a chance to bring it to people. So th there are moments where you know, I like I, you want to get into deeper subjects, but you know, for sports and sports fans, it's pretty important. Yeah, and you have to realize that. I, and the best way I can figure it out, 9/11 happened, and we had a week off, and then I was doing the games with John. And for the first week, I couldn't even bring myself to say. But Sterling. See yeah, John Sterling. I couldn't say see you. I said, how trivial. You know, they're still trying to find bodies, and I got letters from people. You don't realize. This is what we need. This brings us back to normal. Mm -hmm. And you know, a couple of people from MSG, this was before Yes Network, yeah. we went down to Ground Zero. And just to see the firemen and the, and the cops come up to us and say, oh, we can't wait for the games. It takes us away from this. So real, yeah. it's people's escape. You know, you, it, it, it's the toy stores, the candy stores, yeah. I like to say. But it's important for people. So that, that's, that's really what drives me. Michael, it is an honor to have you oh, at our studio. Oh, please, uh, thank studio. you so much. And um, we wish you nothing but the best. You and Jody, your family, your growing family, and- um, No, it stopped growing. That's yeah, it. <laughs> yeah, and you uh, keep being the voice of the Yankees. Thank, thank you, you so much, what a pleasure. Stay with us, we'll be right back. That was great. Thank you. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence.
This special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Tisch WNET studios at Lincoln Center. Funding has been provided by Oscar Health Insurance, Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital, Johnson & Johnson, Valley National Bank, NJM, the Fidelco Group, and by the Russell Berry Foundation. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.